Hello Stampers, it's Debbie with Stamp It With Debbie. Sorry about the technical difficulties. I'm back and I think I'm in the right position this time. Thank you so much if you're stopping by to watch my live video today. If you would just give me a moment to make sure that I'm set up and I'm actually live and going in the right direction, I appreciate your time. Okay, today I'm going to show you how to make a graduation card. And I do realize that um, most of our schools are out right now and we're not actually having official graduations, but I still think it's a good idea to honor anyone who is graduating. And they would love to hear from you, I'm sure. Now this card can be used for anyone from kindergarten all the way up to college graduate, just depending on what stamps you put on it and you know how you decorate it. So let me show you the products that I'm going to be using. And I'm going to be using Peaceful Moments. A couple of these will be retiring out of the catalog and um, we'll talk about that in just a minute. So Peaceful Moments, and this has um, a lot of great different sentiments and I've used it many times before. I like the font and I like that there's happy birthday and sympathy, thank you. Life is better with a friend like you. You've seen me use this a lot. The other stamps that I'm using is Hoot Hoot Hooray, and I'm going to be using this little owl here, and I think it's super cute. Lots of great images in that stamp set. That will be retiring, so if that's something you're looking for, I would go ahead and get your order in very quickly because we don't know once those stamp sets and other products are sold out, they will be gone forever. So the last thing are these tassels, and these are in the Best Dressed Suite, and they are really cute on the little bag that comes in that, but I'm going to show you how to use them for a graduation cap. And so now let me show you the card that I'm creating. It's this one and it opens up and I put the little owl inside there. Of course, you could use this for a college graduate, I think, and um, I actually would. But if you wanted to put something a little more grown up or you know, a different stamp that says you're on your way or the balloon stamp would be real cute in there. Um, and you could do a little stamping here. Now I kept most of my card empty so I can write a little greeting up here. And I did stamp congratulations twice. It didn't quite fit twice, but I still like the way it looked down there. And then I also made one out of Highland Heather because I liked how that looked and I put the little owl in there too. So. As I said, this can be used for a college graduate. It could be used for someone from kindergarten. And how fun would it be? So many of these kids are being homeschooled this year. And if you know somebody who's really struggling with not being in school with their friends and such, and they will officially graduate to the next graduating or the next higher grade up. So I think it would be really fun to go ahead and send them a card and just tell them you're proud of them and Hope they have a great summer. So this is the card that I'm going to show you how to create today. I'm going to set that aside and let me tell you what you're going to need. We are going to need a piece of Highland Heather and I did already cut this but I didn't cut it all the way. We're going to cut it at four and a quarter by nine and three quarters. And while I'm cutting this, I would just like to take time to tell you welcome to my Facebook Live. If you are new here, thank you so much for stopping by. If you've been here before, thank you so much for stopping by again today. So now that I have this cut to the proper length, this is four and a quarter by nine and three quarters. Now we're gonna do a little combination of, we're gonna score this at five and a half. And we're gonna do a little combination of scoreboard and the trimmer. And I realized that the trimmer has a scoring tool on it, but I will tell you that I did this a couple times and I just couldn't, um, I couldn't get it right. So what I'm going to use is my scoreboard and what, what we need to do, I'll tell you, and then if you want to, go ahead and practice on a scrap piece of paper, and then I'll show you in a minute why 
I feel like it didn't quite work for me and why I'm going to do it this way. So on this long edge, here's my score line that was at, this is five and a half. This piece here is four and a quarter. So I'm going to put the four and a quarter square in first. We're going to score that at two and one eighth. I'm sorry, we're not going to score it. We're going to put a little notch. I, I got in the scoreboard mode. We're gonna put a little notch at two and an eighth. We're also gonna put a notch at six and three eighths. Okay, so we're gonna disregard this. I'm gonna to try to use my bone folder to get that off there. So two and one eighth, six and three eighths. Just put a little notch. If you would prefer, you can use, um, I'm gonna use here a little white, my white watercolor pencil. So I'll just put a mark, that way I won't be trying to score this side too, sorry about that. It, it'll work out fine though, I can just um, get that off there with my scoring tool. This side, now the five and a half inch side is here. We're gonna score at three and three eighths. And seven and five eighths. So all this is doing is, now as I told you, you can do this in your trimmer because it does have scoring, but the, with the little lines, it made it a little wonky. And if if you don't have these at the right the right fold, when you go to fold this down, one of the lines could be a little bit longer than the other one, and then you're not going to fold evenly. And so I would just recommend if you're going to use your trimmer, you can also use just a ruler and mark those lines. That would be fine too. And um, you just need to have the mark. So this is the five and a half inch score line right here. You're gonna mark two and an eighth this way on both sides and two and an eighth this way. Now we do need to make one more mark here. On this four and a quarter side, we're gonna make one little mark at two and an eighth. Okay, and we're done with our scoreboard. Now we will need to get our trimmer back out and I'm gonna see if I can fix that oops without shaking you too much. I have a little different setup this week. I'm actually on my husband's, um, at the place where my husband is working this week, so I don't have my regular table. So if it gets a little shaky, that's why. Okay, be sure and put your cutting tool way up there. You don't wanna cut. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna score Here's our two score lines here on the five and a half inch side. These are our, our little tick marks here on the four and a quarter inch side here. We're gonna score from here to here. I'm gonna take another pencil here and then we're gonna score from here to here. So you're gonna end up with score lines like that. Okay, let me put these things aside and how you're gonna do that is you're just gonna line that little tick mark right in the ditch of your cutter. And then we're gonna bring the one that's on the opposite side. And again, make sure, 100% sure, you have your scoring tool instead of your cutter. And now I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and score that side. All right, now that that's scored, you can hopefully see there's a crisscross there. This is the score that we did at five and a half inches. Now, what we need to do is, this is the four and a quarter inch side, and remember that little mark that we made down here at two and an eighth. We're going to line that mark that we made on the side with this mark on the bottom. And we're gonna cut that piece off. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Again, we just marked up the, um, right here, that little tick mark we made at the bottom of the four and a quarter inch square and along the side here. And now we're done with our cutter. Now don't worry about, um, I normally would use pencil because I'm where I am, I don't have pencil, so I'm gonna, I'll just take something to get that off of there later. So we want to take our bone folder and just make sure that we get a really good 
fold on this. So we're gonna fold in half at the five and a half inch score mark first. And then we're gonna bring this over. And if you notice that it's not quite lined up, you can kind of force it with your bone folder, but that mark there should line up right with that tick mark that we made on the other side. Now we're gonna open it up and we're gonna fold at an angle again. And it is important that these line up because if they don't, when you go to fold your card, it's gonna be a little bit tight closing. So now you just need to burnish those marks. One thing that I found helped a little bit is if you do it one side at a time. So we started out by burnishing this, then we went here, then we went here. So then what you can do is kind of use your fingers and pinch these in, bring this one in and this one down, and hopefully you can see that okay. Then I'm just gonna use my bone folder. I'm gonna open that one up, fold this side down, and then that one back. Let me turn it a little bit so hopefully you can see it. And then I'm just gonna burnish that. And there's our card. And I'm gonna try to, um, I don't wanna shake my table too much. I have an eraser that hopefully will take some of that off. All right, so we're done with this piece right for right now. One thing that we do need to do is I have a half inch punch this punch will be retiring. So if you like small punches, you're definitely going to want to get this. So we need one of those. I'm just going to set that aside. We're going to need some dimensionals, but I'm going to set those aside for just a minute. Now I did go ahead and do my stamping already. This piece here is cut at two and three quarters by two and three quarters. I used Memento Black ink to stamp the owl. And while scoring, now we could probably do this one on the uh, scoreboard, but I'm just going to mark this one at two and an eighth. My white piece at two and one eighth. And we could have probably easily done this one, like I said, on the oops, on the paper trimmer. Um, but we also need to mark down two and an eighth here, which I forgot to do, sorry. So we marked it here first, two and one eighth. We're gonna go right here, just put a little mark there. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna flip this one over because this marker will show through. But if you wanted to flip it over, you could do two and an eighth, and then that one is at three inches. So two and one eighth here, we're gonna flip it over, and that one's at three inches. And again, two and one eighth here. And then we're gonna use our paper trimmer. And we're gonna cut at the angle just like we did before. So I'm gonna line up that little mark I made there with this little mark I made on the side here, right here. And this is gonna allow when we cut this piece of paper, or when, once we cut it, it's gonna allow it to fit right up inside of here. So again, I'm gonna line up there where the mark was here along with the side. And then we're done with that. So since I already did the stamping, again, I did use the Peaceful Moments, and I stamped congratulations along the bottom here. I think if you had a different saying, that would look really cute there. If you wanted to stamp um, more words, you could do them up here so they don't show on the card. Flowers, anything would be really cute in there. I'm going to put this piece right inside of here, just leaving a nice even edge around the outside. Now this piece here, I do want to do a little coloring. And so I'm gonna use my dark pumpkin pie to color the beak. And then I'm going to use my, actually my Highland Heather was a little bit worn out. So I decided to use purple posy, dark purple posy. The brush tip was a little bit worn out. So I think that this will still match just fine.
and you could color it brown, you could color it whatever color you choose. I just think that the purple looks super whimsical and cute, so. Almost done coloring. I hope you all are having a good day here where I am. I'm in Traverse City, Michigan, in case you're from out of state that's northern Michigan and it's kind of dreary here today and it's been raining on and off and that's okay it's um this is a big tourist area but with our state on lockdown all of the um wineries are closed so I'm hoping they'll open up before we come home so this triangle piece is just going to go right inside of here it's nice to be so close to the water though. That that will be nice. Even though everything's closed, I can still go and maybe pick up some Petoskey stones or something. So now again, I just burnished that one more time. And then how I'm gonna make the tassel part right here is again, I punched that little half inch punch and I'm going to grab my tassel and I'm gonna take a dimensional. I'm gonna put the first dimensional down in the middle and peel the backing off of it. And then I'm going to pick it up and I just wanna place my tassel so that it looks good to me. And then I'm gonna turn it back over and I'm gonna put one more dimensional and I'm gonna line the dimensional up just so it looks good from the back side, right on top of that. And then I'll go ahead and peel that backing off. And then actually I wanted to show you something before I peel the backing. So sometimes you can see the, the coloring there on the side. So if you wanted it to match, you can take your Stampin' Blends markers and color the side of the dimensional. Um, if you're making a black card, we do have black dimensionals. And so those would be really good for that. I'm just coloring all the way around. So if someone happens to peek on the inside, it will match. Okay, and now I'm just gonna put that right in the middle of my cap and there it is. Isn't that so cute? I think this would be great for a little girl graduating, but um, I did try this out earlier with a piece of Pacific Point and the colors that come in this package are Pretty Peacock, Petal Pink, and Whisper White, and you get six of each of the tassels. So you can imagine you could do a pretty good variety of graduation cards. And then when if you have leftover, you can make some cute purses with the best dressed suite. So there we are, a fun graduation card. What do you think? Which one is your favorite? And would you use the owl for a college graduate or would you just save that for uh, younger graduate. I'm going to be showing you some more projects using this stamp set, the Hoot Hoot Ray, so I hope that you will come back and visit my Facebook page again and my YouTube channel. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash stamp it with Debbie and if you need any supplies I've left a link to my online store below and I appreciate you so much stopping by today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I hope that I will see you again very soon.